11. Okay, so we're in chapter 11, verse 11. There is no Rashi on chapter 11, verse 11. So Sorry, we're up to 12. verse 12. 12. So, so Moshe said to Hashem, why did you do that? Right, Moshe was complaining. And he says, Hanochi harisi es He said, did I conceive of this entire people? Am I with it to you? Am I the one who gave birth to it? Kitomar Eli, that you said to me, Sa'eu bechekecha, carry it in your bosom, kasher yisa omein esayonek, like a, like a nurse carries a nursing child, on the earth that you swore to his fathers. So this is, Moshe compares himself to a, to a nurse carrying a baby. So, so Rashi says, You're the one who said to me, carry him in your bosom. Where did God say this to Moshe? He said, Go we the people. It says, and he commanded Moshe and Aaron regarding the children of Israel. He said, I did this to you with the understanding. They may stone you and they may insult you. To the land that you swore its fathers. You say to me, to carry them in my bosom. Uh, Jerry, did you have a question? Uh, how true it is that uh, we see uh, today leaders getting pel pelted uh, not only with words, but with uh, uh, dangerous uh, 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 I can't think of the word. Um, well, I remember when George Bush got a shoe thrown at him. <laughs> and it's not funny. I mean, he, he was, but yeah. Very nice point. Okay, so he says, "May I leave Basar?" What? Oh, so this is a one. Yes, Jerry, are uh, you raising your hand? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Okay, so then the verse continues. The Moshe Rabbeinu says, "May I leave Basar?" Where would I have the flesh to give to this whole people? Kiv kua laile more that they're going to cry to me saying, "To no anu Basar v'nochila, give us some flesh and we'll eat it." He says, I can't do this. I can't carry this whole people by myself. It's too, it's too heavy for me. Hold on. Hold on one second. So then it says, oh, there's a fly in here. Terrible. So then he says, and if this is how you deal with me, kill me now. If I found favor in your eyes, let me not see my evil. Let me not see my evil. She says, if this is what you do for me. So Moshe's strength was weakened. Can a cave like a female? When Hashem showed him the punishments that he was destined to bring about them, Alzos. Moshe said, Kill me first. Let me not see my evil. She says, It should have said, He said, it should have said, I don't want to see their evil. Now, Shikina Akasov, the verse uses it as Kina Akasov. This is what's called a euphemism. Uh, this is one of the scribal emendations in the Torah. So there's a whole question about the scribal emendation. Does this mean that later scribes change the text of the Torah? So it says, I don't want to see my bad, but he changed it, it said they're bad, and he changed, the later scribes changed it to my bad, or does it mean that Moshe Rabbeinu himself used the euphemism? So, um, not surprisingly, the article, pro, the article does not accept the idea that later scribes changed it. Mm -hmm. In their footnote, they, they expressly reject that approach, but some scholars say that that is the possible reading here. <laughs> 
Okay, next verse. So Moshe is saying that I can't carry this entire burden, and if this is what you're doing, Hashem, just kill me. Yeah, well, it, Rashi says that Moshe saw that they were planning, that Hashem was planning on punishing all of them, and he says, if that's what you're planning on doing, kill me first, because so I don't see them. Yes, Jerry. Uh, excuse me, does this mean that Rashi uh, uh, admits that uh, the Torah was uh, written by man and there were several different variations? Well, that's what I said, that the art scroll rejects that explanation, but if you look at Rashi literally, that's what the, uh, the, uh, that's what the text seems to say. Now the art school rejects that, but that's what Rashi actually says. So I don't know. I don't. Want, I can't comment any more than what I told you. Um, but what, what, what does Steinschultz have to say about this? Stein, Rabbi Steinschultz doesn't give a running commentary on Rashi here, <laughs> so I don't think he would comment on it because this is a this is a comment that Rashi makes. So right. Yes. But there is a whole discussion about this in the literature, whether or not, what does Rashi mean when he says it was an emendation by a scribe? What does Rashi mean by that? Last time we had this, Rabbi, you asked me to look at the, um, all the different occurrences because what Jerry said was basically that we teach our kids that the Torah was never changed. And I don't teach you, them that, so. I mean, no, so I'm saying what, what you said in response is basically that for kids, it's better if they think that the Torah is 100% the same. But as adults, we're, we can be open to Tachamim, like Rashi, who suggests that there were changes that were made. Um, Very minor, but and they were done for a purpose. But of course, we know that there were different texts floating around. Is it raining out there? OK. All right, wait, we have a big surprise for everybody. Big, big surprise coming. Can't even tell you what it is. You're going to love this surprise so much. Yeah, you're going to say you're going to be so shocked when you see this. You're going to be shocked beyond words. So then he says, God said to Moshe, yes. Rabbi, yeah. on that verse, there's a footnote in that says, see it in Ezra. Oh. Okay. Okay, well, we'll have to make a mental note to check that on uh, verse six, 15. Mm-hmm. Now he said, and God said to Moshe, As for we shiv him ish me zigne Israel, I'll show you that he him zigne amish or trav. Collect for me 70 elders from the elders of Israel that they are zigne amish or trav. They're the elders of the people and their officers. Take them to the Omoed, Miss Yatsu Shami Mach. And stand there with you. So now this is a very important Rashi. Rashi says, Hare Teshuva Batunatcha. I'm going to give you a response. You said, You said, I alone cannot carry this nation. Where were the original elders? Even in Egypt, Moshe and Aaron sat with them as the states. So where are all these elders? Where'd they go? They died in the fires of Tabera. They were fit for this punishment from Sinai. Because it says, So why did they die? Because they viewed God. They ate and they drank. They, they acted with levity. Like somebody who takes a bite of bread. Like they, it's not appropriate to be eating while you're having this spiritual meeting with God. And there they are, they're taking a bite of bread while they're in the presence of the king. Nevertheless, they ate and they drank. God didn't want to kill them in Matan Torah, make a, kill all the elders at Sinai. So he waited till here, and that's when he killed them. What's the matter? So why did you go eat from Some, you know, like so. That's the good, very good point. And it's, I would say, that that's just like there's so many things that people need to work on in ourselves and our lives. Uh, so, so um, that's 
for most of us, it's not a priority, but I'm, I'm pretty careful not to do it while I study Torah, but most people are, you know, there's other things we need to work on until we get to that point. Shut down the soup kitchen. Shut down. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying like people come in, they go, we're not looking at you, Bill. They come in, they've been working all day. They've been working like crazy all day. They've been running around and they finally got a second. They use that one second that they have to study Torah and then they need energy. That's so they're eating the He's saying they need the energy to study Torah, but but uh, but but they're not the elders of the community. They're not one of the seventy top Jews who were taken, and they're not also we're not at Sinai. Very so you know what? If when you get up to heaven and they're flogging you for eating while you're studying Torah, you know you're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're at the bottom of the list. <laughs> But keep drinking, by the way. I don't want to embarrass anybody. God forbid. I did not mean to keep drinking. The soup's here for a reason. And it's energy. Yeah, it's drugs. energy. Because otherwise, you wouldn't even fall asleep because it's on me. If I would be a more dynamic teacher, you th that would be the best food. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you, Shia, for that question. So, uh, you yeah. also want to know on that. Yeah. What does he say? He says that. Because Moses was 40 days without eating or drinking. Right. He couldn't understand people whose concern was um, food. Food. Yeah, Moshe went 40 days. Right. Did you have a question, Jerry? No. Okay, fine. Then it says, it says, you know that they are the elders. So Rashi says, Otansha Tamakir Shinit Manu Alayim Shotrim. These are the people who were appointed guards over Israel in Egypt. Bavodos parach, for their crushing labor. They would take pity on them. And they would be beaten by the Egyptians because of them. So who are these people who Hashem makes the elders here? Those were the people who were the guards over B'nai Israel, and they would have pity on the Jews, and they were getting beaten. As it says, B'nai Israel. Ata, now, now these people are being reappointed. Like they were suffered in their distress. So those people, those people who took the punch for the Jews, now they're the ones being appointed the elders. Yes, Jerry. Uh, in the English translation, it says, and the officers of Shmad. I thought Shmad means uh, to um, uh, become... Um, uh, a rebel uh, to give up the religion. I, I, the, Are they the, officers the, of Shemad? I don't have that in my translation. Let me the see. English, uh, the, the one that uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Goldman puts up. The, the letters are Shin Mem Dalet Shemad. Oh, and the officers of, let me see. Volume. So that's yeah, but, but they've had a lot of spelling mistakes, especially in the Hebrew, even in this parsha. And I'm going to send an email of all the spelling mistakes. So I don't think that that's a real uh, good uh, typing. Meaning, I think it's a mistake because uh, why would they weren't they weren't uh, at all obliterated or annihilated? I I don't uh, um I don't have that in my Rashi. The, but do you see it here? I, I, it doesn't make any sense, in, even in the sentence. Jerry, you're sharp. Nothing gets past you, but I don't have that in mind. Okay. And take them. Take them with words. Fortunate that you were appointed officers. Over God's children. So that B'nai Israel should see if you knew Gubahem Gedula the Kavod. So and and have them stand there with you, so that people will see and give them respect. The Yomru Chaviv and Elu Shenet Masu and Moshe or Shmo Tibor Mi Piyak Kodesh Bracha. Look how precious these people are. They stand there with God to hear a speech from God. They stand there with Moshe. Then Rashi says. Then the verses. The Aravati Vidivarti Machsham Vatsalti Min Aruach Asher Awecha. And then I'm going to go down and I'll speak with you there and I'll place from your spirit 
and I'll place it on them and they will bear the burden of the people with you and you won't have to bear it alone. Okay, what happens now? So Rashi, Rashi says, We are at it. Zu echad mi eser yuridos aksuvos b'Torah. This is one of the ten yuridos that are written in the Torah. There are ten times there's a yurida written in the Torah. V'dibarti imach. So where are the other ten yuridos that are listed in the Torah? There is uh, ten places where it says God goes down. Genesis has has four of them. Exodus has three of them. Numbers has one. So is that, that's uh, actually only eight. But then uh, Zechariah, yeah, so there's actually only nine. I don't know how they got to 10, but okay. They, there are not 10 places, but okay. And then it states, and I'll speak with you, but not with them. This is such a beautiful verse. Hashem is taking the spirit of Hashem, of Moshe. I will increase some of the spirit that's upon you and place it upon them. The Arabe, I will increase like the Atzilei b'nei Israel, and it's like the Atzilei to the nobles of the children of Israel. The Samti Aleim, I will place it upon them. Look at this Rashi. This Rashi is the, the spectacular. What was Moshe like at that moment? You have a lamp that's on a flame that's on a, lamp, a candelabrum, a, a candle on a candelabrum. Everybody's taking light from it. The light is not diminished. So Hashem took some of Moshe's spirit and gave it to everybody. But nobody was, uh, but Moshe was not diminished at all. So Moshe made all these leaders. This is like the fact that Moshe just kept promoting everybody to, to be his helper, and none of his spirit was diminished. Yes, Jerry, you had a question. Uh, yes. Uh, here God gives Moses a, uh, uh, an advice on how to govern. Why did uh, uh, Moses <clears throat> have to wait for his father-in-law to make a suggestion that when you, Moses, sit in judgment as a judge, uh, you should set up a, ju uh, a, uh, a department of, uh, of uh, a judicial department? Why didn't Moses use this, this pasuk, uh, this, these, uh, these pasukim that we just learned as a uh, hint as to what he should do in the future when he acts as a judge. Well, the, the, the question is, well, this happens after the scene with Yisrael. <laughs> the scene with Yisrael happens before this. But, but why did God let Yisrael give that suggestion? Why didn't God give it to Moshe? That's a very good question. Is it raining, Shia? Okay, no, because I left some trash out there, which I need to put away. Okay, so it's a good question, Jerry. I don't have the answer to that. Oh, John. Uh, ter terrific. Now, the next passage says, and they will, the people will bear the burden of the people with you. Make a stipulation with them. Oh, wait, I'm, Rabbi Yosef, you had a question. Not a question, really. A comment. My father was a chemist, and about the candlestick, he actually proved that if you put a lit candle below a not lit candle, the lit the not lit candle will light up. It, it's it's unbelievable. Try it. Don't try this at home, but try it at home. It's just what do you mean? If you put you take a lit candle and you put it underneath a not lit candle, and even though it's like six centimeters away from it. It will still light up. Okay, so it's, it's beautiful. It's just what Rashi said about about the uh, transferring the light even with without. Anyway, just sorry. Uh, uh, Rabbi Goldman, you mean the heat of the burning candle 
will uh, heat up the wick of the non-burning candle, and the non-burning candle will then uh, become uh, lit. I guess so. I I don't I don't know why it happens, but that's what happens. So uh, I have to try. Have you, that. have you tried it, uh, Rabbi Goldman? A long, long time ago. And it worked. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. I think we should stop now to Dava Mincha. We'll stop now to Dava Mincha. And uh, okay, Shkoyach. Shalom. <laughs>